So here's a card swipe from Among Us. I'm gonna be showing you how to make it. So let's slickety slack, crickety crack, get right into it. The wallet is just a plain black leather wallet. You open it up. This is just uh, hand drawn along with the card, which is also just hand drawn. The card is just any basic card. I sanded down a little bevel here so it's easier to engage the buttons here. And inside the wallet is just little pieces of paper crumbled up. That's all it is for the wallet itself. For the actual card reader, it's being powered by a power supply right there, five volts in to power the Atmega and the LCD screen. The body is 3D printed uh, in two parts. One part, as you can see, if I split this open, is a panel and the second part is the full scanner itself printed from here all the way up without any supports here or here i melted some holes to put some tactile buttons here in order to read if a card is placed so getting a little bit closer you can see how just melted everything is together so these resistors here and this back resistor form a voltage divider here. And so the voltage here is detected by the Arduino up here on this circuit. And it's able to detect how much voltage is at this part. Here's a circuit to detect the card. And so we have two buttons, button one and button two. And analog pin four reading the voltage at this point here. If no button is connected, then it will read a voltage of zero since it's connected down to ground. When the first button is pressed, five volts is able to flow through this resistor of 5K, 5,000, and it connects to the 2,000 ohm resistor down to ground, but will not flow through the 5K resistor. So this will create a voltage divider at this point and read a voltage here, sending to the analog pin four. When both buttons are pressed, then both of these resistors are connected to ground, creating a different divided voltage. Since these two are connected in parallel, then the actual resistance here, first resistor times the second resistor over the first resistor, plus the second resistor. So it'd be 10K squared since 5K and 2K. Cancel out the K. And you're left with 1.4 thousand ohms. And so the new resistance when both buttons are pressed will be 1.4K ohms. And so when the five volts is flowing through both of these, then it will be going through an actual 1.4K resistance. And so it will detect somewhere around uh, one to two volts in this line here. I'm using three digital pins. And so they're just indicators of the card. When the card is first placed in, it lights up digital pin 11 this will be the green LED being lit. And behind the green LED is just a regular 220 ohm resistor. Digital pin 10 is for the red LED. And so behind the red LED is a 1K ohm resistor in order for the LED not to burn out. And finally, digital pin 9 is using the buzzer here and just connect it straight to ground. I recommend using a resistor here behind the buzzer just because it draws a lot of current 
So you can limit the current. You limit the current, you will lower the volume of the buzzer. Another way to wire this is having two analog pins connected to the two different buttons. And so you could have five volts on the other side and have the other side connected to ground and the analog pin so that when the card hits the button, it sends five volts through and it will detect five volts. I also recommend using a resistor, just a 220 will do. And if you do use a resistor, make sure that the analog is behind the resistor that's connected to ground. If the analog pin is connected after the resistor, it will always detect zero volts going through since it's connected straight to ground and not behind the resistor. The reason is because voltage flows through the resistor. And if you only have one resistor connected, then all of the voltage will be running through the resistor and after will just show a voltage of zero. But if you check behind the resistor, you'll see how much voltage is being supplied. The reason why I didn't have two different analog pins is just so I could try this out, see if I could figure out a clever way of only using one analog pin and having different voltages through the use of parallel resistors and a voltage divider. One drawback is once the card is at this position here, it will automatically detect zero volts since all voltage will be cut off from this button. So that means the card will only be here once it's finished scanning instead of over here. The LCD circuit itself I went over in the MedBase scan video that I made. This is a blue backlit LCD and they sell green and yellow backlit LCDs. This blue one is the only one I had, but the green and yellow one will probably look closer to the original. The majority of this build is just in the programming of this Atmega 328P. So uh, we'll head over to that. All right, so here's the code and started off with, it's only using the liquid crystal library. And here is the initiation of the LCD. I've changed it up just for my own circuit that I made, but uh, I'll link a video on LCD displays with Arduino in the description down below. Uh, next up is the red LED, which is hooked up to pin number 10. After red is green on digital pin 11. And finally, there's a buzzer on digital pin nine. There's two true or false variables called fail or pass, and they're both set to false. And now to the void setup is the LCD begin 16 comma two. 16 is the total amount of characters on each line. And two initiates both segments since it's a 16 by two LCD. Uh, one, only one is necessary for the scanner. So this could be changed to one. Next is the declaration of the three digital pins. They're all set to output. Right here, just calling digital pin number 10 as red. So if you needed to change the digital pin, then you could just have to change it here based on what digital pin you're changing to. Also the same for green and for the buzzer. And after that, it will print please insert card on the LCD display. Now in the loop, it's gonna constantly do a delay of 100. After every delay, it's gonna check the analog pin number four declared as A4 and using an analog read, declaring a variable int reading. So just an integer. And once declaring reading, we can use it throughout the code. Next, there's a if statement so that if the reading is greater than 950 or less than 1000, then it will clear the LCD and print please swipe card. 
What this means is that if the first button is pressed and the analog pin number four is reading a voltage between these variables, if you use the same exact resistors that I use, then you can just use this variable here. If you use different resistor values, then you'll have to figure out what exactly it will be reading. So right here in the next statement is a while statement and it has the same as before but this time it will continuously run the whole code in the while statement here so that if the card is taken out then it will start back up here in the loop and keep going through until it detects the first button being pressed again at first i had if it if reading was not equal to zero but you run the problem of getting this statement here, which will turn on the green LED when it shouldn't be turned on. Using this statement instead should prevent this. I don't see any issues, but if there are any issues, then just use not equal to zero. So in the while statement is an if statement saying if fail is equal to false, then the green LED will turn on, meaning that when you first put in the card, the LED should turn on, the green LED should turn on. But if you fail once, then it will not turn on again. This right here will reset the pass to false. This is just in case you completed it once and you try it again, it doesn't get caught as being true so it's just a reset if you do happen to pass the swipe after that it will check the analog pin 4 and if the reading is between 450 and 500 meaning that the both buttons are pressed then it will write the green led as low meaning turning it off and it'll also turn off the red led and this will initiate the card swipe. So after all LEDs are off, then it will go into a for statement. It declares a variable here. While i is less than three, it will run the code. Once i equals three, it will not run the code. It will just skip the code. Every time the code is run, it will add one to i. It will run it a total of three times. So the first time I will be zero, it will run. Second time it will be one, it will run. And third time it will be two and it will run. And after the third time it will equal three. And so it won't run, it will just skip it. And the actual for statement is a delay of 100. And this is 100 milliseconds. After that it will read the analog pin again. And if the reading is zero, which means that only the second button is pressed, then it will go into the statement saying that red will be turned on, the LED, the buzzer will turn on, the LCD will clear, it will print too fast, try again. And after a delay of 500 for the buzzer making the beeping sound, it will then turn off the buzzer. It will mark fail as true and it will break. And what this break does here is it will stop running the for statement and just exit. This if statement here will only be run if the card is not swiped too fast. We have, again, checking the analog pin. And if the reading is equal to zero, then the green will turn on, the buzzer will turn on, the LCD will clear, accepted, thank you, a delay of 100 for a quick buzzer noise to turn on and off, and then turn on and off one more time. After that, fail will equal false and pass will equal true. And there is another break, so it doesn't run this twice more or however many times more. After that whole statement, we have a while statement. Reading does not equal zero and pass is equal to false. So if the code is run and the card presses both buttons in the time that all of this code runs and it meets here, 
then pass will still equal false and won't be marked true. And so it will be running this segment of code, which has a longer delay just because this can have the card pressing both buttons as long as you want. Basically forever, it will just continuously run all of this code here. But as before, it will check every time the analog pin four. And once the first button is unpressed, then it will write the red LED is high, turning it on, buzzer high, turning it on, and LCD clear, printing too slow, try again, delay of 500 for the long buzz noise, and fail as true. And again, do a break to exit this statement. And that's all the code. So that's pretty much it. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. And thank you for watching.